Come this December 25th, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank will mark its six-year anniversary. The founding members of the bank recognized the pressing need to close Asia's massive infrastructure gap. Now, since late 2015, the AIIB has seen rapid growth in its membership, providing development financing beyond just Asia. From its 57 founding members, the bank now has 104 members. In a span of just six years, the AIIB has grown to become the world's second largest multilateral development bank. The bank is working step by step to fulfill its mission of building the infrastructure of tomorrow. Now, that infrastructure, as envisioned by the AIIB, is environmentally, financially and socially sustainable. In 2016, when it first began operations, the bank approved eight projects. This year, 50 projects have been approved, bringing the total tally to 159, with total approved financing standing at nearly $32 billion. It holds a AAA rating from the world's top credit rating agencies, is a permanent observer in the UN, and prides itself on its governance model that epitomizes transparency, openness, independence, and accountability. Understanding that the infrastructure of tomorrow will need to be climate resilient and that Asia's development needs to be green in order to meet the Paris Agreement goals, the AIIB has announced an ambitious target to ensure 50% of its overall approved financing by 2025 will be directed toward climate finance. The bank has also committed $13 billion in financing to the public and private sectors from April of 2020 to April of 2022 to help its members and clients support their fights against COVID-19. Now, as the AIIB turns six, I believe it's also important to highlight the bank as a champion of true multilateralism. In an era where multilateralism is under pressure, the AIIB continues to operate under consensus. Its capital subscription formula gives a much stronger voice to smaller economies and lower income countries while ensuring the international responsibilities needed to be shouldered by bigger powers. Although the bank was initiated by China, it is open to any country that wants to participate. China has the largest voting share in the AIIB, but its president, Jin Li Chun, says China has no intention of exercising its veto power. This stands in sharp contrast to what former U.S. Treasury Secretary Jack Liu has told the U.S. Congress when talking about the IMF. Mr. Liu said, quote, we have a veto in the IMF. We have a controlling voice when we need to. We have leverage so that the United States can influence the economic decisions around the world. The AIIB, however, reflects global development and global governance being built and shared by all and not monopolized by any single or group of countries. Going forward, we can expect the AIIB to continue to open its doors to countries that want to focus on international cooperation instead of confrontation. It will continue to work with its multilateral lending peers to finance international development spanning from renewable energy to public health. And most importantly, it will continue to uphold true multilateralism for the benefit of all.